hello and welcome to D&D with Austin Tatius with me, your host, Austin Shock. Today, we are going to be talking about the inciting incident. Why are we talking about the inciting incident? Well, simple. It's the topic I've been talking about most with my students this week in terms of their D&D. What is the inciting incident? Well, that is an easy question to answer. If you see, the inciting incident is... The thing, the moment, that forces the plot to actually happen. So as you're writing your stories or getting ready for your campaigns, ask yourself this. What is the thing that is going to happen that is going to force the plot? First, we're going to watch a video clip to show the inciting incident in A New Hope. It starts out with the ship getting caught. That right there is the start of the inciting incident where suddenly the equilibrium has changed. George Lucas and his filmmakers then use a lot of techniques to raise the tension. A lot of strange noises, a lot of waiting around. Then we have the incident itself. The moment the stormtroopers make it into the ship, the rebels are done and the plot begins. Now, there are a lot of people out there who are probably asking this question, but where's the protagonist? How can you have an inciting incident that has nothing to do with the protagonist? And to that I say, well, I'm looking at the inciting incident not as a character-centric thing, but as a plot-centric thing. Specifically, what is the event that forces the plot to happen, not what is the event that forces the protagonist to join into the plot. And especially for D&D, I would argue that that is a much stronger way to look at that question. Look at it this way. Either your NPCs become the protagonists, at which point your player characters are just going to be side characters at best, or you have to choose which of your players is the protagonist, which of your players is the character that the plot hinges on. Then if your plot changes or the character leaves, you're stuck in a rut where the plot fails. Don't think of the plot as needing a protagonist. Think of the plot as something that happens that your characters drive forward. Through their actions, they will show you which one of them the protagonist is, and it just might end up being the group. Now that we have a better idea of what an inciting incident is, let's go a little bit more deeply into why it matters to have one. A lot of people just start upright their campaign, say this is the problem, go for it, and that can lead to some serious problems in the campaign. Players don't always know then what the plot is. They know what they have to do, but they don't exactly know why they have to do it. It's just something to do. And so without that drive of plot, it's easy to get off course. Speaking of which, the other thing the inciting incident does is it gives the plot direction. It gives them a place to go. All right, we're now going to show a couple of quick video clips. The first one is going to show the direct result of the inciting incident. The second one and third one then are going to show the setup for the choices of plotline that your players could choose to follow. Because of the inciting incident, Leia has to hide the plans. Both the plans and Leia can have pretty equal weight, which means right now your players have a choice. Not getting in bed. If your players think the plans are more important, then they can follow the droids down to Tatooine. But if Leia is the one they think is more important, then they can do a spy mission aboard the Death Star instead. Regardless, it gives us a direction to go. Thirdly, and perhaps most importantly, getting back to establishing it makes the plot matter for the players. At the end of the day, D&D is a collaborative storytelling game, which means the players have to care if they're going to get anywhere. Yeah, they can just do things and have fun, but that lacks any sense of depth. And eventually D&D will just get boring, old, and stale because there's nothing there to grip them. If you give your players a reason to care, if you make it matter to their characters, then suddenly your story has a lot more depth your players themselves have a reason to want to finish this whole thing beyond just, we're good people. And it helps create this greater sense of urgency and connection between everyone, because then everyone is working together for this greater good. Let's move over to that asterisk, Mr. Special Effects. Thank you, Mr. Special Effects. So now here we are over at the complication, which is 
player choice because a lot of what I said has been very directed. And so for a lot of people, they hear that and say, well, isn't that just railroading your players? You know, I believe that players should always have a choice in what they get to do. If they don't want to do this, they should get to do whatever they want. And that is definitely one way to play. But that is also very black and white because you see things are not as simple as railroading where there is one path for your player to go and player choice where there is all of the paths for them to go. What I have found as a teacher is that people tend to work better within boundaries. You don't have to say there's just one way to go. There can be choices. Go back to what I said about the example inciting incident. We have two options of who to follow and the movie takes both options. We can go down to Tatooine and follow the droids and see where that part of the plot goes. Or we can follow Princess Leia and see where her part of the plot goes. Your players will only get to see one of those two things until those two plot points intersect. Once you have established what the inciting incident is, it's okay to give them multiple directions. That's where player choice comes from. On the planning side, what that basically means is you only have to plan one thing. You just have to reflavor it depending on where they go. Let's now go to this example. You're playing some nice D&D &D droids and Death Stars. That's right, you are doing a Star Wars version of D&D &D where you are going through A New Hope because it's the example we've been using. Let's just keep reusing it. There they are, they're on the ship. You start them out, you say they're part of a crew. They've been on this ship for a while when suddenly everything rumbles. They need to make a dexterity saving throw. Why? Well, to see if they can stay standing or stay in their seat. They don't know what's going on, but then they see other people around them start to panic. They start to piece it together. We are under attack. They might try to go and save things, but no matter what they do, the inciting incident is going to happen. The other ship is just too big and too powerful. They get boarded. And that right there, is the inciting incident. The boarding has happened. Now, no matter what they do, the plot is going to go forward. Maybe they meet Princess Leia and they're like, oh my God, Princess Leia, you have to come with us. She says no, unless they roll a nat 20, she's always just going to say no. And if they do roll a nat 20, well, they're gonna run into a cohort of stormtroopers where they are gonna convince her to come with them, but now they're in a little bit of a fight. No matter what though, the plot is moving. She has already given the plans to R2-D2 and C-3PO. And in the middle of this firefight, they're holding their own. She mentions this to the players. The players now have their choice and make sure it is spelled out for them by Princess Leia. She says, I sent some droids down to the planet, but I need someone to go down there and make sure they get to Obi-Wan Kenobi. On the other hand, you're doing really well against these stormtroopers. It might be really, really nice to have someone on the inside, someone who can sort of look after me and who is a spy that they don't know is a spy. Which one are you going to take? That right there is the choice. The players now have an option about which one they consider more important. Is it the plans or is it the person? That's how an inciting incident works. It's something that gets their blood pumping a little bit, gets them moving forward, and then gives them that direction. They then get to play the game as they want to. If they decide to go down to the planet, they then have to track down the droids, which is going to involve going to the Lars homestead before it is destroyed, and then figuring out that, hey, they mentioned Luke went over there, let's go over there, meeting up Luke and Ben Kenobi, probably just before Luke takes off because he's realized that the Jawas have been killed. On the other hand, maybe they disguise themselves as stormtroopers, and what they need to do is they need to collect intel and figure out who else is part of the rebels so that they can get them information to get it smuggled out of there, or maybe they turn into these smugglers themselves. There, you've done it. You've made an inciting incident that has established the plot, that has given your players a choice of the direction they are going to go in, and by doing so, has made what happens matter to them. They are the ones who are in command and in control, and I can guarantee that so long as your plot has a definite end that they are working towards, a goal that they know what it is, they will be far more engaged than you've probably ever seen them before. And so, my friends, that is the inciting incident. It is that event in your story happening towards the beginning that gets the plot rolling. It is the one single thing that, if it did not happen, would mean that you would not actually have a plot. It is that which gives your players direction and that which gives them an emotional attachment 
to what happens, that they feel like they should succeed rather than just they should play the game. Make sure as you are planning that it is one of those aspects you think deeply about for the first session, or if you want to stretch things out a little bit, the second session. Otherwise, you will just have a group of chaotic beings going around destroying things for no particular reason. Well, this has been another adventure of the Gostentatious. If you liked it, tell your friends. If you hated it, tell your enemies. And if you don't care either way, well, tell everyone. Stay safe, be amazing, and happy quarantine.